First of all, we should see that how our conditioning takes over our innocence. It makes you extremely ritualistic. Even in Sahaja Yoga I've seen, I've heard also, that people are extremely, extremely uh, <coughs> ritualistic. Now the ritualism is like this, that you have to say something three times, you say three times, seven times, like tied up people. <laughs> I have seen some Sahaja Yogis like that. And some Sahaja Yogis, I think they must be Bhutish, get frightened with Me. What is there to be frightened of Me? Because they are Bhutish, they are getting frightened. <coughs> Otherwise why should you? I love you all and you won't find more a greater uh, mild guru than Myself. <laughs> I don't think so. But they are afraid, even if you look at them they'll not smile, they'll be afraid. What wrong have you done? You have become Sahaja Yogis. They are so ritualistic in everything. So one should understand a difference between a protocol and ritualism. Our innocent child knows the protocol. I remember there was a child who came to see Me in Oxford <coughs> and I said, let's go upstairs. So it was a small little staircase uh, of food. He said, what? Is she going to go up without a red carpet? This came into his head. So for children, you see, innocent children, the worship, everything is not ritualistic, it is heartfelt. You feel it from the heart. How to do the worship? How to show your love? It's very sweet way an innocent person does it. Why? <coughs> A person who is very ritualistic, he may even beat another person because, why did you do this? You should not have put camphor in it. Why did you put the camphor? So it's very wrong. There's nothing wrong. If you do it with your heart, with your open heart, innocently anything is all right. It is the open heart which is necessary, not the closed heart, why did you do it, why didn't you do it, uh, where did you see it, what happened, nothing. Now you are in the kingdom of God. And here there are no such rules and regulations that you should be ritualistic. But everything has a double, has a double style. Now I say you need not be ritualistic. Once I went into an ashram and I found everything was just like a pigsty. I said, what's this? Is this an ashram or what is it? So they said, Mother, you told us that you have to be innocent and you don't have to be ritualistic. So we thought, throw all the things, wherever you feel like, what is there to be ritualistic? It's a very common thing. You all the ashrama people, leaders tell Me that Sahaja Yogis have no sense at all of looking after the cleanliness of the ashram. They are least bothered. If it is their house, they look after. But if it is an ashram, they do. It's very surprising. And I have seen or I have heard that the ashrams are of bhutish and false gurus are absolutely spick and span. Really? It's very surprising. And <coughs> even here in Kabeda, people were telling Me that they are living like animals. I said, animals are innocent, you know.
In that also, one has to understand that it is the innocence which is the force, not the morality. <coughs> like some people write to me, Mother, I get up in the morning, I sit before the photograph, I do this, I do that, then I take my bath and then I do this. I don't... I can't understand this, no, not necessary. You have to cleanse yourself once in the night, as you will cleanse yourself, your body, and once in the morning you have to pray, that's all. It's not necessary to have this ritualism, this kind of a uh, rigmarole all the time, you're going every day, morning till evening, nonsensical, these things. And they become fanatic. They start becoming absolutely fanatic about self. And this fanaticism can be very dangerous <clears throat> because they try to remember everything by heart, this and that. No, not necessary. It should be in the heart because it amounts to the lip service then. And with the lip service gradually you start feeling, uh, you are great, your father is great, you this and that. So you are thrown away. You yourself throw yourself out, like a... I can say like a, you hit a ball and it comes back, like... I've seen people, many who try to thrust themselves in Sahaja Yoga, just are repelled back by themselves, not by Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga attracts you, no doubt, but you must have gravity. If you don't have gravity, how can you be attracted? The seriousness about it is only this, that you should introspect seriously, find out what's wrong with you, because this is a great chance for you to ascend. With this kind of a mind which becomes fanatic in Sahaja Yoga, start saying harsh things to others and disturbing the peace of others because they think they are very great uh, sajogis. Then I think one should introspect and find out why am I doing it. <coughs>